My only classmate had warned me. Walking down a corridor, I feel like I'm burning up. I don't like how his fever's coming on. It's not an instantaneous flush of heat like a kettle. Instead, it's slow and creeping like it's searching for the exact temperature I'll be able to bear. As someone with a naturally weak constitution, I already know the best methods of dealing with it. Eat, drink, crawl into bed, and sleep for as long as you can. How oh, you should take care of a sudden fever. However, I don't want Neri to worry. My best friend worries about me more than herself, which I don't want to get threatening if I can help it. Which is why I'm now heading somewhere I don't have any normal reason to go to. As I walk along, I look out the windows. The bare branches of a cherry tree shut in the wind like with silent, bony fingers of a dead. The season has already tried to push it off from autumn to winter. Hmm? Who's that? The sound of the door closing, bringing my attention away from the window and towards its source. Recognise a student who's just left the nurse's office, I raise my hand and call out to her. Bring her name, she looks my way. A good day, Yatsuro Senpai. Long time no see. She greets me with a usual feline smile. I've been so busy with club and council duties recently. Hmm. What's this? Did you miss me? Hardly. Just your coffee. I can't help but smile smugly with praise I'm not a fan of coffee myself. But this is a girl I cultivated for my best friend's sake. What is it? Are you scheming something? No, I'm just genuinely pleased. Anyway, how have you been, yagaki -kun? I mean, you're at a nurse's office, let me guess. Aren't flows in town who need some medical intervention? I'm shocked. You're actually right. I have a heavy flow, so this time of a month never goes well for me. She listens. Lee shows me a package that must contain painkillers. It's rare for her to respond with such honesty. No. I guess she's just a fundamentally honest person. I think a person's true nature comes in it comes out in such questions. Now some people hold up to unreachable internal watershed. They will find themselves unable to answer a question. It's almost like they don't even hear what we're being asked. Sister Basket and I are representatives of this type. Yeah, Gaki could, however, isn't like that. At first, she thought she was the same as me, but actually, she'll give you an answer to any question you asked her. It might not be completely truthful, but it's an answer nonetheless. I'm sure this quality must be something one was born with. Really? I get up lightly, so I can't even imagine your pain. There's nothing I can do. I know. How about I rub up your belly for you? Well, that'd be cute. Could you not make me laugh when I'm feeling unwell? If the dolly walked in and you rubbing my belly. You got yourself off. I keep sending a bright shadow of red. Well, let's let her have a better. Anyway, what are you at the nurse's office for? Are you have to offload some worries? I'm always worried. It's hard being such a steel of heart, you know. Great. Now I've got a headache to go on my stomach ache. See ya. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm for exactly what you just mentioned. I see. So a stomach ache, is it? Is this a bit of advice? You really should eat things you find on the floor. She smiles cattily as she gets her usual revenge barbin. A spot is hard for me to resist. Huh? Well, the only thing I see on the floor right now is you. And her mouth wide and leaning towards her neck. Face immediately turned scarlet. Senpai, come on out, seriously. She can be so adorable when she's embarrassed. Cut what out? I just told you. I have a really annoying sidekick to contend with. Sidekick. I have a sound about it. It's a pet name I'll never obtain for myself. You're right. I don't want to foot up my butt. When I slowly pull away, Egekikun releases a sigh of relief. You're in... indefatigable. A one year age gap can make all the difference. Anyway, tell you the truth, I'm here for a headache. 
She blinks at me and asks if I have a cold. I respond in the affirmative. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, even yet she has some boys susceptible to the odd cold. Your esteemed class president said something similar. Can't read expectations. I have quite a quite delicate constitution. I thought Shuahana was the only delicate flower I knew. Yeah, I've heard that one too. I smile at her. She puts her hand to her chin thoughtfully as she regards me. If you don't have a fever, taking a bath might be a good idea. wanted to join me but I would have been warned against taunting her and I can't really flirt with her too much can I? I've heard the colds aren't accompanied by a fever, taking a bath and raising your body temperature can boost your immune system. So I know she's not trying to get back at me. That's I think I'm trying to trick you. I won't tell you that's a lie about to a sick person. Yeah. Oh, I heard something along those lines too, so I know it's true. Yeah, Gaki can scratch his head and mumble something about overstepping. But I can tell you're concerned about me. Thanks. Huh? What's up? N nothing. Just seems a bit of a character for you. She looks away, her cheeks flushed. It's okay. I'm not like it's not like I'm marching after war tomorrow. She looks taken off guard for a moment before a usual feline smile curves across her face. Somehow I feel like I'm talking to my middle sister. Tell her Mount Almond. Going back to our previous conversation. They say that your immune system is your strongest when your body temperature is at 37 degrees. Which is why it's best to save my bath for 10 to 20 minutes so as long as you don't have a fever. She goes on to say that any longer amount isn't recommended. You're pretty knowledgeable about this. My oldest sister is quite often sickly, so I picked up lots of old wives' remedies. Chidori is also. She stops and says in a moment whether or not she should share it with me. What it say exactly my sidekick's got a weak constitution. We talk about a throat hurting all the time. Or not we can maybe keep a goldfish in our room. Before I have a chance to ask about goldfish, she goes on to answer my unspoken question. A fish tank raises the humidity level in a room. It's like a natural humidifier. That's some good information to know. High humidity can help curb the proliferation of viruses. Perhaps it's partly for my benefit my father always had a tropical fish. If I could keep a tropical fish in my room, maybe I wouldn't have to come and get medicine here. Are you scared of school nurse? No, that's not it. It's just, I guess we don't exactly see eye to eye. It comes to blows the minute you sit down with her. No, I mean, I literally never see her. I'm always missing her. I mean, it rates similar to a major league best bat gives batting average. You know, it's not like she's out in a habit of running off and living off as an attendant. I conclude I probably have simply bad, got bad luck. That's so. You still never be able to see her when you nearest need to. I had the same experience once and was at my wit's end. She rubs her stomach, she must have been in a search for painkillers. Like today, I empathise with her. It's not something I've experienced with myself. If you can't find my nurse, you can always get one from a dorm mother. From a dorm mother? She has a bunch of medicine for emergencies since the nurse is always, is always going to be around. So you're saying it's like with airplane pilots, whereas and where we'll leave pilots as a co-pilot just be safe. Ah, uh, not prefacing what I've got to say with a note that it's not strictly allowed since the dorm mother doesn't have a relevant of qualifications. At the end of the day, one person alone can't respond to every unforeseen situation. Like someone suddenly falling sick, you can't go by a room and get any troubles during the night. That's good to know. I'm not so sure about stopping by at night. That's good with some problem. I called her a nice once before and I interrupted her in the middle of something private. I gasped, wondering if it could have been something X-rated. She was doing needlework. I went and opened the door while she was sewing and started to into stabbing herself with her finger. You wouldn't think she'd be into that, would you? There's no secret that Dormammu Katabami loves sewing. 
just like me. She enjoys girly things, but, but because people don't expect it to her, she has to hide it. Really? Yeah. Actually, she's actually pretty girly. She scraps the scraps of fabric and um, tablecloths, stuff like that. She's a terrible girly girl. Don't you think she's more of a mummy figure? Actually, isn't it? That's true. I nod and we share a smile. Oh, a wild nurse appears. I better hurry before she flees. Go raise that batting average. Pass me a feline smile as I make to leave. Alright, I'm looking forward to the court contest at the end of the month. My two late favourite words, ladylike and cool. Miss Mildred disappears and she rolls up gracefully, just like a cat. Didn't I tell you to get some rest? She sure did, but this is my duty. As one of the many members of a choir club, I could have probably gone on away with just skipping out and resting in my room, but I also have my duties to be president of the Council of Nikaia. After you're present at a meeting to decide what song the club will sing out to close up the contest. So having heard everyone's opinion on the matter, I think we should go for a hymn to see if a new transfer students to learn to sing. Given her accompanying, accommodating nature, this is inevitable. I got more to myself personally wanting to show off all fancy singing techniques we'd learnt. Look around at everyone's face, I all nod along as they're in search for someone who will agree with me. Now he calls out to Hakama-san, a keyboardist. For quite a couple sing three pieces. It's additional for two to be hymns and one to be standard choral piece. Kama stands sitting on a piano stool with her fingers poised over keys, catches Nero's look and begins to play. This is. It's a familiar nostalgic melody that warms my soul. I heard it so many times as a child. It's a famous piece, I'm sure some of you will recognise it. Kansa her face before her, looks like she's something from expressions when her gaze comes to rest on me. Usually, huh? The word drives a wedge into my chest. Isn't this rainbow magic? I whisper my voice hoarse. My father often made up stories for me. This happened when I was young, in particular when my mother was hospitalised whilst pregnant with my brother. I was staying in my home and my paternal grandmother, who was afraid of a big old house with a thatched roof and low-hanging beams, was unable to sleep properly at night. However, on the rare occasions my father would get home before bedtime, he gently took me into my futon and tell me a story. Once my father, the fear faded away and I'd drift out of sleep in the middle of a tale. The stories he told me weren't time-honoured folk tales, nor twist on real-life history. For a fairy tales of his own creation. Delightful, funny stories that would keep me awake laughing, melancholic tales that would have me soaking my pillow with tears, nonsensical stories that erased my childish mind. All of them served as precious mem precious nourishment of my soul. And so, I began such a strange outcome when I became a book lover. As a gloomy introverted child, I would sit by myself in the classroom. Flipping the pages of a book, thanks to my father's influence, my genre of choice was fantasy. Wait, is that... Shohane? I realise it isn't actually... I don't know, it couldn't... No, so we have. Can't be Shohane. It's gotta be... It was Carol's Alice Adventures in Wonderland. Charles Kingley's The Water Baby is a fairy tale for Land Baby. The novel I love the most was The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by Lyman Frank Bohm. I saw the characters in the book as projections of myself and those around me. The Tin Woodman who had a heart was me. And the Cowardly Lion was Nerone Kamikado. We become friends after the incident on our school trip, but still couldn't get close to her. Nerone looks like she's going to be such a, such, such a tomboy in that picture. Reason was simple. 
She wasn't alone like I was. No, and I had lots of friends. She couldn't pay attention to only me. I never spoke to her when she was with her friends, but when she was alone, I'd look at my courage and say a few words. Yeah, definitely cowardly line, I'd say. Well, she's got this cowardly line fits you, actually. If I stroke a good luck, it turned out our houses were close together. We share the same route home. My journey to and from school became the happiest part of my day. When I couldn't be around her, I buried my head in a book, occasionally sticking glances her way whenever my eyes grew tired. There she would be, laughing with her friends, the centre of a class. But my eyes, knowing they come out of the seemed somehow afraid. She smiled, but it didn't reach her eyes. She looked, but she didn't seem to really see. I'm a cowardly lion, felt like she was hiding some in the frailty to from the world. Then, one day, tired of laughing, she left her circle of friends and came over to ask me what I was reading. It was the first time she'd spoken to me in front of your people. I found myself lost of words. She looked like a book in my hands. But what about Wizard of Oz? I like that book too. She gazed down at her page and opened. Her silver shoes are nice. They let you go anywhere. There are three reasons I love Wonderful Wizard of Oz. And one of them was those silver shoes. I had those silver shoes. I could be with my mother in the hospital in an instant. Even though I was well aware of just fantasy, I still thought to myself just how wonderful that would be. So I was shocked to find that Nerone Kamikado had the same feelings in her heart. She stared at me like she'd seen something in my face. Click your heels three times. She said this and... An amber-coloured wall materialised before me. That's the end of the episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>